female reproductive system is composed of five major elements. The vagina, uterine cervix, the uterus, two fallopian tubes, and the ovaries. Adenomyosis is a condition that affects the uterus. The uterus contains three distinctive layers. The innermost epithelial layer is called the endometrium. The middle layer, which is composed of smooth muscle cells, is called the myometrium. And the outermost layer is called the perimetrium, also known as the serosa. Adenomyosis is defined as the presence of ectopic endometrial tissue in the myometrium of the uterus, surrounded by reactive smooth muscle hyperplasia. This image shows a normal uterus in the left side and a uterus with adenomyosis in the right side. Adenomyosis can be diffuse and scattered, as shown in this picture, or it could be focal, occupying only a smaller area of the uterus. Women with adenomyosis are usually multiparous and may recall a history of previous gynecological surgery. And they are usually diagnosed between 30 to 50 years of age. Now let's discuss about the etiology and pathogenesis of adenomyosis. The endometrium of the uterus can be divided further into two layers. The functional layer, which sheds off during each menstrual cycle, and the basal layer, which lies just above the myometrial layer of the uterus. Currently accepted theory for the pathogenesis of adenomyosis includes the abnormal invagination of the basal layer into the myometrium. Unlike many other tissues, there is no intervening layer between the mucosa and the muscle layer of the uterus, which strongly supports this theory. Causes of this abnormal invagination include mechanical disruption of the interface between the endometrium and myometrium, hormonal changes, and impaired immunity. Mechanical disruption can occur in multiparous women. In addition, uterine trauma, especially during surgeries involving the uterus, such as dilation and curatage, and cesarean section, and dysfunctional uterine contractions, can also cause mechanical disruption. Hormonal imbalances include high estrogen levels, which induce the growth and maintenance of adenomyosis. Signs and symptoms are related to the cyclical hormonal changes, since the ectopic endometrium is sensitive to estrogen. Bleeding within the myometrium leads to increasingly severe dysmenorrhea or painful menstruation. Uterine enlargement. Heavy menstrual bleeding. Dyspareunia or painful intercourse. And chronic pelvic pain. Some women may also have infertility. Examination findings may include pallor due to anemia caused by excessive bleeding and a diffusely enlarged, tender, boggy uterus, which may have a nodular surface. Adenomyosis currently remains largely a clinical diagnosis. Definitive diagnosis of the condition requires a histologic examination of uterine tissue. Laboratory studies are same as for any patient presenting with abnormal uterine bleeding and include evaluation for anemia, thyroid and pituitary function, Evaluation for bleeding disorders and sexually transmitted infections if indicated. First-line imaging study is the trans-abdominal ultrasound scan. MRI scan facilitates better visualization of the junctional zone, but it is not performed routinely. Other procedures include diagnostic hysteroscopy and myometrial biopsy. Finally, let's discuss about the treatment. The most important factor to consider here is the desire for future fertility. The only definitive treatment for adenomyosis is hysterectomy. However, it is not an option for women who have a desire for future fertility. Medical treatment options for adenomyosis include the following. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs to alleviate pain. Combined oral contraceptive pills, progestin-only pills, and Depo-Provera all of which elicit a negative feedback effect on the hypothalamic pituitary ovarian axis, leading to suppressed ovarian hormone secretion, especially estrogen. Progesterone-containing intrauterine device, which induces atrophy of the endometrial glands and decreases menstrual blood flow. In addition, it also causes down-regulation of estrogen receptors and decreases the size of adenomyotic foci. Other treatment options include Continuous treatment with GnRH agonists, which reduces the secretion of gonadotropins, inducing a hypoestrogenic state. Danazol, which suppresses the pituitary secretion of gonadotropins. 
and aromatase inhibitors, which inhibit the conversion of androgens into estrogen. Surgical treatment options include the following. High-intensity focused ultrasound, which causes thermal ablation and necrosis of adenomyotic foci. It is a conservative surgical option that preserves the uterus. It reduces the size of the uterus and alleviates the symptoms. Uterine artery embolization, which is commonly used for fibroids, now is also used for adenomyosis. Adenomyomectomy and hysterectomy are the other two surgical options.